at first that trout, its name was Arizona trout, but they changed it because the tribe took steps to keep it here and you know, keep it from actually going extinct. Trout is named after the people here, and I think uh, be a lot of positive stuff happening from that. Back in the 50s, it all started with uh, the council, you know, taking notice that the numbers were really going down, and they uh, put a put a resolution together, closing the headwaters so we can uh, so the fish can persist. Started out as just uh, people, really, you know, tribe members really didn't fish for them. They just it was part of the ecosystem, so they kept an eye on on, on it because it look, you know, they always look at everything as has its uh, part in the ecosystem. You know, once something collapses somewhere or something goes wrong, it has an impact somewhere else. So I guess that's how they. Uh, were able to save that patch of trout. They, uh, they noticed the numbers really going down and the populations moved up into the headwaters. So they took action and closed the headwaters to fishing and everything else. There were a few things that we think led to the declines that resulted in Apache trout being listed initially under the Endangered Species Preservation Act in 1967 as endangered. You know, beginning in the 1800s, as Anglo-American settlers started populating Arizona, uh, we think there was a fair amount of overutilization going on um, because Apache trout, even then, known by a different name or different names, um, you know, they were a popular sport fish as well as popular table fare. That was almost certainly you know, a major component, but there was also habitat degradation from road construction, logging activities, other land use practices. There was introduction of non-native species to provide additional recreational opportunities for uh, folks in the area. And all those things put lots of pressure on Apache trout and really restricted their range pretty quickly. Whenever a species is listed, you know, the, the first and foremost, it seems too simple to say, but the goal is always to delist them. Uh, and that's certainly the track we've been on with Apache trout. We're trying to do everything possible to really set these populations up to be secure for the long term so that, you know, we can start focusing on other resources. I think the tribes are really taking a leadership position when it comes to the restoration of the Apache trout. You know, the majority of the water and the majority of the Apache trout habitat does reside on the White Mountain Apache Reservation, but they realize the same threats that I mentioned, connectivity to habitat, increased wildfire and drought, and these fish need to come out of the headwaters that are on their reservations, come onto public land, spawn in the main stem, come down for food sources, that sort of thing, and then, you know, come back to the reservation. My office in particular works really closely with the White Mountain Apache Tribe to monitor Apache trout populations and to implement recovery actions. And we do, you know, we do, do that on a pretty big scale. Since 2018, we've put over five and a half million seconds of electrofishing effort into just non-native trout removal alone. We do as much as we can to support the tribe's priorities in Apache trout conservation. There's definitely some vulnerability. We are concerned about wildfire and climate change. Uh, additional climate change aspects like the alteration in the timing of precipitation in these systems, uh, as well as uh, warming. Despite the fact that we are concerned about climate change and wildfire, we still view non-native trout as the primary threat today and into the future.
you know, we're in Arizona where most people don't even think about trout fishing, you know, because they think of Arizona as being all desert, being hot. You know, you, you're seeing our news right now from Phoenix. We've had how many days over 110 degrees? A lot. But you drive four hours from Phoenix and you're at 9,000 feet elevation and you have all these beautiful trout species and especially the Apache trout. And it's the, the uniqueness and just the fact that this fish has survived, you know, everything that it's all the issues that it has. I moved to Arizona in 96, was living in the Phoenix area, found a women's fly fishing club, which is obviously unusual, especially in the 90s. And that, you know, again, got my love and interest in fly fishing. And eventually I went to work for the Orvis company. I worked for Orvis for eight years. And then eventually wanted to branch out and do something else. So I left the Orvis company and started my own guide service. And so I've been guiding 10 years full time. Fortunately or, or unfortunately, we need a little bit of attention on these fish because they need our help. You know, they're still in a struggle. Even though there's an initiative right now to delist them, you know, they still need our attention and they still need our help. And the more people who are aware, the more people who are out there, the more people who are advocating for them, the better it's going to be and the more Apache trout we're going to have, hopefully, to be able to fish to. You know, you can catch a rainbow or a brown or a brookie in a lot of places, in a lot of different water, and we love those fish too. But just to have a fish that you can't catch anywhere or find anywhere else in the world, you know, it just kind of makes you a little bit passionate about it because once these fish are gone, they're gone. We don't have anywhere else to go and try and recover the species. The species is only here. It's only on this mountain. And so that to me is what makes me so passionate about it is because we don't want it to disappear. In August of last year, the service conducted a five-year status review and recommended delisting. And that's still in process um, within the agency. As part of that process, we actually signed an Apache Trout Cooperative Management Agreement. This agreement's between um, the White Mountain Apache Tribe, Arizona Game and Fish Department, the Apache Sickreeves National Forest, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and Trout Unlimited is actually a signature as well um, to this agreement. And it, it basically ensures that even if Apache Trout are delisted, these agencies are going to continue to work together to make sure Apache Trout stay delisted and stay at a good status. And so everyone is this, in this cohesive network together with this shared goal uh, working on this special species. And so, yeah, I think the future is very bright for this fish. You know, we are facing some adversity with the warming climate and wildfires, but what we're working on and some of the habitat that we're looking to connect is really gonna help mitigate the risk of those factors. By connecting these headwater streams to main stems, that's really gonna give this fish the best chance possible to face adversity. As far as the trout, the Apache trout being delisted, I think it'll be a big boost for the tribe being recognized for the efforts and, you know, the things they've done to protect us and keep the species going. The White Mountain Apache Tribe is committed to continuing to protect all of the pure Apache Trail populations on the reservation. So there'll really be no status change uh, for Apache Trout here in the core of Apache Trout Recovery Country. And then Arizona Game and Fish Department doesn't allow catch and release angling on Apache Trout recovery populations until they have an adult abundance of at least 500 adult fish. So, 
There's a lot of things in place that will continue to protect these fish regardless of their listing status. Yeah, I, I think that our stance on the delisting of the native Apache trout, we're excited. We think it's a great step forward, uh, but we do realize that they're right on the brink. They could fall right back onto the list. So it's not a, you know, hooray and stop working. It's a hooray and work even harder, realizing that these fish are worth putting our time into. They are putting effort into. We can get them off the list. They can bring these populations back. What I've uh, seen through my career working with Apache trout, it's uh, something I think uh, that I'm happy with, and something that uh, has kept me busy. There's always uh, stuff, something new that you learn 